and I decided to debut a song that I'd never performed before called um, Gospel Truth. Um, and it was just a, basically about an experience that I had um, at a young age um, where I was sexually abused by a pastor. By definition, an underdog is a competitor thought to have little chance of winning a fight or contest. For me, an underdog means something completely different. An underdog for me is someone who fights back, someone who bites back, someone, someone who, who doesn't, doesn't give, give up. up, someone who keeps on going. That no matter how difficult the fight is, we don't give up, we keep on biting. We all have the underdog within us. Welcome to The Underdog Bites Back. If you know me, you know that I love music. You also know that I like to sing. I can't, but I try. One of my favourite UK recording artists is with me right now, and I feel utterly privileged for her to be present. And the reason why I've asked her to come on this Underdog series is because I don't think she is given the ratings that she deserves as an outstanding, phenomenal singer, songwriter. She's everything. So, I welcome to Underdog Bites Back, Sherry V. Nice Do you know what? Because it's true. I think I've watched you um, perform live. Mm. I've listened to you in recordings. Mm. I've seen you do your YouTube lives. And I think your voice is remarkable. Thank you. And I always ask myself, why is it that you have not, let's say, made it? Mm. But what does made it mean? So for you, what does made it mean? I guess made it, I guess, in like... The most simplest turn, I guess, is becoming a household name, really, mm. isn't it? Um, but in terms of being, in terms of striving and being able to keep my lights on from doing what I do, I definitely do that mm. at the moment um, and have done for some time. I guess it's just being known on a broader scale. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's what I'm comparing it. Like I see, I, it is definitely the household name bit of it for me mm. because I can speak to someone and they don't know who you are. And I'm like, don't you know her? <laughs> like, have you heard her tune? But there's so many artists out there though. There's so many artists. Maybe I'm like... just, I'm just a bit biased. But <laughs> I, don't, don't you think that you stand up highly to the rest of them? That like, don't you... Can you not hear yourself? No, I can. I can definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely hear myself, but also I'm just like, it, we live in a very big, wide world. I don't have a machine behind me, and I just kind of rely on my passion and word of mouth, really, in it. And whoever is able to like help me promote my music, whether it's radio or whatever, and and that's just like. That's just the journey that I've been on for a minute. And so that's what, that's what for me, sometimes I think is where we go wrong in the UK. Okay. Because in America, mm. they put 900 million percent into it. And I feel mm. that some of our UK artists don't give it their, you know, sleeping in cars business. You know, yeah. like I, I, I like Tiffany Haddish, for yeah. example, as a comedian. And when I listen to her journey, mm. what she had to go through to get to where she's mm. gone through, she sacrificed it all, slept in cars, done the whole nine. But are we prepared to do all of that? Yeah, but the return is different when you're here. So like, tell me about that. I feel that. like you could do sleeping in your car, car all day in the UK and, and I don't know, sacrificing the whole entire world. Not saying that that's gonna, not going to change anything, but especially as a black female artist, there's more scope for you to kind of do that and be successful in the US than it is in the UK, I believe. And what, why do you think that is? Because, you know, we've got the same access. So people like Drake come here. Yeah. They love here. Yeah. So what is it that we're not taking advantage but of? But what do they love here though? It's not, he doesn't come here for R&B. So what does he come here for? He comes here for grime and, and. So have and, you thought of changing your direction? Nah. Come on. <laughs> like, She's like, come on. <laughs> like, I really can see you rapping. What? Yeah, you know, like you go from a little vocal flow to a little 16. I don't know. I don't know about that. Because I think you've got, per like, I'd be, it, those that don't be know, I think like, be would I be? Yeah, yeah. 
Should we try a team? Nah, nah. We're nah, not nah, trying. Nah, nah, nah. Because I, you're actually a comedian too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to give you that title because you do a vexation Veronica that you put on a character. Mm, mm. And those that haven't seen it need to see it. Mm. What? Because there's another part of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I must say, like, I've definitely come to terms with the fact that I am multifaceted. Mm. And it's crazy because once upon a time, I would shy away from the comedic side of me because the rules used to be you do one thing, stick to one thing. And um, if you do, like, step in or delve in or dabble with comedy, people don't look at your artistry the same way. Right. But I think people have adopted a bit more of the American US mentality where it's just like, if you're talented and it's content, put it out. Yeah. Um, but I, I do feel like in the beginning I had a bit of a struggle with like people hitting me up about the stage of Veronica and not hitting me about my latest release. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm fighting with myself. Yeah. Like, but then somebody said to me, a wise man said to me not too long ago, that good content is good content. So this is what I'm it. saying. Mm. Because as I go on that page, I realise that you do other things and you link it too. I mean, the other thing that I was thinking about and you know, I've, you and I have touched on it before is about sexiness mm. and even though I've noticed more recently you've become quite sexy I've always been no. that oh my no. god like, like on your Instagram you're really yeah. showing out the bazongas now <laughs> You're about that life you know what? Now. If I Google myself, yeah, yeah, that sounds so stupid. But if I Google myself and show you picture, they've always been on 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 Front Street. They have. And do you think that the women that make it are the ones that show it more on Front Street? Nah, I don't believe that. So don't you think sex sells? I do believe sex sells, but I don't believe that that's the only way that women can prosper by being like sexual. So you, you're telling me you don't know no one in the industry that slept with the producer to get the record? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So what are you saying to Because me? the thing is, but there's, there's people that are very talented yeah. and are not very sex sexual and that are still very established. Have you ever considered it? What? Like, you know, just making yourself more available. Nah, Rasta. <laughs> nah? Nah. No, you're not on that. No. What, what's the most you would do to get to where you need to be? I just want to know, what would you do to get to where you need to be? Work hard. But what if you never do it? What if you're, you know, 50 out here mm. still trying to bang out notes? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, for as long as I love it, I will always do it. I don't believe that I need to do anything against my will to get to a certain place. Whatever's for me is not going to pass me. It hasn't happened at this scale yet, but I've still got fire in my belly. So the world is my oyster. And what gives you that fire? Um, I, there's, there's, there's nothing that makes me feel the way music is for me. It's very therapeutic. Like it's me, when I give you my music, I'm giving you my diary. Um, I can accept and, and, embrace the fact that I've been given a gift so to share it is gives me gives me joy because you know I, um you know we are how can I say it sisters in 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 marriage loss let's say yeah, yeah? yeah. and both of us have experienced failed marriages and yeah. your your songs about it yeah it touched me uh, like especially without talking too much of my tea or spilling too much of the tea and making it burn up the place about infidelity yeah and about how that torments you as a woman mm. because one of the things that i think people don't don't realize that we still have to keep going and you mm. still have to write music yeah. but you're writing things that are real to you mm -hmm. how do you protect your energy but also spill your your truth do you know what i just feel like and the thing is i just feel like when you are truthful when you own your story and your truth. It just, it gives me so much freedom. No one can come for me. No one can kind of call me out or anything because I've said it. I put it mm. on the table. And even in that in itself brings about another type of healing for me. Mm. Um, and also I just feel like it's better out than in, man. No, it is, but it's, it's also a conflict because sometimes I sit on these podcasts, I sit on these interviews mm. and sometimes I spill my guts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I think, oh, what if the ex hears this? Is it going to be drama? Is he going to, is his friend going to phone him? And do you ever think that when you put out a song about, cause some of your stuff you've talked about, if you read, you don't need to read between the lines. The yeah. line says it, yeah. what's happened yeah. to yeah. you yeah. And, and what you've experienced. Do you not worry about that? Um, I guess whoever I am referring to kind of knows that about me anyway. Mm. And, and to be honest, I was very vocal before and during and after yeah. um, my marriage. So to be fair, 
it's nothing there's nothing different there yeah. um, so and that's why you've got to stick to your truth and be yeah. who you are and yeah. be trans have you ever found yourself changing who you are for other people um at the beginning stages of my journey yeah I felt like there was a a type of cherry I needed to be what was that type of cherry just a bit more like as I said before like not 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 so much the comedy thing not showing my personality um certain types of music I've, I've experimented with and, and and I've been happy to be like the person that can wear many hats and um, very vocally versatile but at the same time um I can't sit here and say that I done X, Y, Z because I felt like I was told that was more palatable. Right. You know what I mean? And you come from a family of singers. Yeah. Is that hard to live up to? Because I, I, I sometimes think that my mum was a certain person and I have to live up to that. Yeah. And there's a lot of comparison. <clears throat> How do you deal with that? Do you know what? Initially, it was difficult because I don't have the same vocal style as like my mum and my aunt and I think initially like meeting even like their generation and below the minute they hear that you're related to someone they expect you to be exactly the same okay so you're gonna be this style and your voice is gonna be like this is like nah like I had to carve out my own sound and my own name um as a respected musician um and that took a few years but I feel like I'm comfortable now to just be like my family members who are musicians are dope they're yeah. so dope and they're in their own lane and I wouldn't even try <laughs> and yeah. try and um, step on the rhythm with them, so to speak. But um, I'm quite happy with where I've sat and um, my reputation um, has meant a lot to me. Well, who is Cherry V? She's a... St- <laughs> I want to know who she is. <laughs> she is a musician. She's a singer-songwriter. She's a truth teller. She is a strong black woman from the UK. Does she is she ever broken? Has been hundred percent. Yeah, and what breaks you? Um, what has I guess in a COVID's been peak. <laughs> <laughs> um, COVID's been super difficult. That like was very very difficult in the beginning. Um, the music industry at her times has been very heartbreaking. Relationships have been heartbreaking. Racism has been heartbreaking. Colorism has been heartbreaking. Um, Do you think colorism is a thing? Someone said to me the other day that they don't actually think that colorism is a thing. Oh, I, I don't have any doubt that it's a thing. Any and how doubt. have you experienced colorism? I think I've really because um, you're not the darkest girl. Yeah, but if this, me and you was to match, yeah, but, I would be NW forty seven, and you would be probably an NC. Yeah, but something, this is innit? what I can't. I just I'm can't, just saying. Can't do this. No, we can. No, I could say. That I experience colorism as a dark skinned female. I wouldn't necessarily say you're a dark skinned female. That's, see, that's bad mind. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, because me and you do not wear the same shade of No, clothes. but the fact of the matter is, in my humble opinion, yeah, yeah. there's two. Go on. Light skin and dark skin. I am not light skin. But so you're not dark. Yeah, but I am in the dark skin category. I am. I am. <laughs> you can't tell Why me you that. Why are you trying to give yourself that status? No, but it's not, but it's not a bad status. Okay. It's not a bad status. And that's the thing. I feel like there's a blurred line because it's like, oh, why would you want to be like, yo, I'm happy to be considered dark skin. Yeah. Happy. And what do you think are the challenges to be considered dark skin? Um, In your position, like music wise, etc. There is, there is a preference when it comes to, to female singers, I think. And I do feel like there is a preference when it comes to lighter skinned female vocalists. Why? Because of colorism. And I think it's because of like how women are ranked as and deemed as 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 attractive. What is deemed as yeah. more attractive? And you know, people will look at singers and want to, I don't know, fall in love with them, be attracted to them. And if they're the narrative is that this person is more attractive than that person, then you know what they're going to gravitate towards. But I feel like it's gotten a lot better. Mm. I used to scream it from the rooftops, like. <sighs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think it's got a lot better and I feel like we're seeing a lot more black women, black girls just really embrace themselves and be proud. Because I was thinking of like groups and you've got, what was that group now that was Sue Elise was in? Endobs. Is that Sue Elise? Oh no, sorry. I thought you said Talisa. No, sorry. Um, so, um, Mystique. Mystique, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So the lead singer, yeah. Dark Skin. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got the one that actually made it mm-hmm. is Light Skin. Mm-hmm. Is that colorism? Um, or is that talent? In that, in that, and away in, we go. In that instance, she, stop it. <laughs> I'm just saying. In that instance, I think that's about choices. How do you mean? Because I feel like, 
um, Alicia chose to go into presenting. Right. And that was where her success is. Yeah. Sabrina is very successful. As just not in the line. No, just not in the line. Like she's right. very successful. You see, don't get it twisted. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's what I think the challenge is. So, someone like myself who wouldn't know that yeah. would think mm, she ain't doing nothing. No, no, no. She's on her. She's on her thing. And that's the probably problem with music, you know, because like you write also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so sometimes we don't know who you write for, but mm-hmm. it could be a banger. Mm-hmm. Are you prepared sometimes to take that back seat? And be the writer and not the person at the front of the camera. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it many times. Um, but I don't know. Fortunately, unfortunately, the, the I guess one of the, the most popular songs that I wrote, I had written it to to be a writer and then vocaled it and then had like the team actually say that we just feel like you should just stay on it so sometimes that's happened to me as well um but i've taken a back seat like yeah i'm just here as a songwriter today and then evoke it and like yeah but you kind of fits your voice so you might as well just stay on it so how do you write for someone else's voice though do you know what i just kind of write in a different style and like and even if i'm on the way to a session i'll listen to like what the reference is because you know sometimes like when they give you when they give you go to a songwriting session they might say the reference is i don't know one Direction or the references Ed Sheeran or, or okay. do you know what I mean? Uh, Whitney Houston. I don't know. But um, you just kind of get to that mind frame of just writing it in that style and then just kind of see what happens. And how do you then, because you, you work as well. Yeah. How do you balance your passion with your your needs? Well, right now I don't have to because what I do, I work in arts with young children younger young people okay so i don't have to hide or i don't have to like um all of my my skills that i've learned as an independent artist have been transferable to what i'm doing now have you ever had to sacrifice oh 100 percent. and and where were you when that happened begin of in covid yo i found myself in some admin position and i was like what is going on (laughs) what is really going on what is really going on (laughs) <laughs> so you're sitting behind the desk oh gosh behind the that. desk and behind and like working from home with like some Eden on HP laptop like <laughs> later so but you, you need must right yeah it was at the time because obviously 100% of my income or shall I say 98 95% of my income was from live performances so right. COVID lashing down everything like I was in a process of applying for my visa for the US I had all my tours um booked for 2020 cancel 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 so I had to find another way to keep my lights on mad what about only fans well, this is the thing because yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I did. Cause you got, I, let's go. I'm not going to keep talking about the racks, yeah. But you've got assets. <laughs> You're multifaceted, multi. <laughs> you could take a good picture. Oh, I could God, give you direction. I got it in my head, but I just don't have it I'm in the. Me know what that so, is. so, so, would you consider? Well, I, I kind of started one. Oh, nice. <clears throat> But it wasn't under the platform of OnlyFans. It was a Patreon. Okay. And I'll be very honest with you. Mm. I uh, I uh, started a Patreon. And uh, in the first month, um, it was quite a successful month. Um, but <laughs> I got a bit scared. Why? Because um, they feel like the more that you do it, <clears throat> the more, like, you know, people start to request. And, you know, like, people that, like... People that are on my Instagram that I I didn't wouldn't normally like have like major conversations within the DMs or whatever now have access to mm. all the other parts of me that's not on Instagram. Right. And some of them, you know, are a bit closer to home. <laughs> and uh like, like your family friend. It was a bit um challenging. Yeah. But the first month was quite a successful payout. So um <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> about how to navigate that in the future because there's there's and, and and your patron was it about sexiness well i had a few tears <laughs> oh okay so it's tears yeah so one of them was like oh you know a few cheeky cherries that was what i used to call it cheeky cherries the, yeah the, the second tier Is that was like pg like, stuff <clears throat> the second tier was like <laughs> um, a few more cheeky cherries, Ooh. and then like I would have I got another tier that's like I offer artist support. And, oh, wait, there's uh, a whole like yeah yeah yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a few different tiers that I do jingles and like I'll send like jingles to radio present like and I'll customize and then the song jingle. for you. <laughs> 
got with me, you know. I customize a song for you. Do you know what I mean? A few little things. I like that though. Yeah. And that's why, you know what? There's no way that you will not be successful. And that for me is, is why I, I see you as this, Underdog just fighting true, you know. Yeah, you're just contango true. You just do <laughs> what to, you've got to do. Have to. With no shame, no fear. <laughs> like, <laughs> shame, you know. No, but there's nothing to be shameful for. Shame. Do you know what I mean? Like, these girls in America are out here on polls and they're getting PhDs. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I think if God had blessed me with a size 10 to 12 frame, mm. about five stone lighter, I would have also had the upper body but strength. You don't, you don't... No, it's the upper body strength. Oh, I can't oh, okay. lift all oh, this weight. Oh, 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 no, no, I was talking about the pole. Okay. I can't lift all of this yeah. onto the pole. Yes, yeah, she can. No, you just need, do you need to lift up. <laughs> she said, no, I can, but I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you, lazy. Need to, you need to start working your arms and then you start lifting up your body. Yeah, because all right. they make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't feel embarrassed. And I think in the UK, we've got this stigma attached to, I don't know, women, sex, showing off their selves, mm. bodies. Mm. Like, it, there's a lot of, of, a lot of shame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. put on us and that puts us in a particular bracket mm. and I think you know there's the amber roses that go you know full hundred and does what they got to do mm. and still have children da 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 but there's others that, d- that don't want to do that no yeah yeah 100% and we're really prudish in the UK too oh 100%, 100%. one minute we've got a short skirt on we're pulling down pulling down yeah why wear the short skirt in the first place yeah but it's a I think it's, there's a lot of culture here especially like black culture that's a bit like is what y'all do like, yeah. you know what I mean don't yeah. shame me yeah. like sister such and such see you on the Instagram yeah. because you know you, your basis is your am I right in saying that your basis was church mm-hmm. and so do you still have that in the back of your head that you have to be church cherry no my no. mum I know my mum's a bit like that's not saved that outfit is not saved and sanctified <laughs> I know my mum's a bit like that sometimes but I think she's kind of given up on me now <laughs> She just gives us her looks the other way. Yeah, because most of Fashion Nova is not saved and sanctified. Yeah, exactly. Like, mom, like, we're, like, let's get past it now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because it's also, it's not what you put out there, it's what's in here too. Yeah, and do you find that ba- battle between... I'm com- Anything that I put out on, on, on the internet, I'm comfortable with. Like, I'm comfortable um, and confident with my body. Yeah. Whatever... <clears throat> not ever, ever size, but like at the different stages I've been on my journey, I'm comfortable with that. And um, it's funny because one sometimes I send some stuff to my friends that like, oh yeah I've done a shoot there da, 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 da. and I my see my my gauge of like what's like sexy and what's not is so off. Yeah, it's so off. Like I'll be a picture and that's like, like the the breasts will be out and like maybe like I'll put my hand on my keyboard. Some my friends will be like, is it? Yeah, is it? And I'm like, that's light. What's what? that? That's <laughs> <laughs> no, like, cherry man, Any you road. actually don't. <laughs> you don't your gauge is off. I'm just like my idea of like <gasps> is when you're just really got like you Legs, know skin underneath off. and everything out of doors. I don't know, like. And I think that's beautiful for for me as a woman, mm. for another woman to be body confident. Mm-hmm. And as I said, I think you are stunning. Mm-hmm. Like, and just just knowing. You don't really give two flyings about it. That makes me think, why should I no, you shouldn't. give a flying? No, you like, shouldn't. I shouldn't feel like I need to go on an app to, because there are apps that I use. For um, so what? To suck in. What for? Because sometimes the girdle doesn't work, okay? And you need to go in, because there's a, a really good app. DM me if you need to know. And you can do this, and it sucks your waist in a bit. No, babe. And then the arm too, you know, because no, the arm babe. is a bit big. So then you could, no, you don't no, ever babe. do that. Never. You never felt a picture? Never. No, I feel when it comes to like uh, the appearance of the skin, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I never pull anything since, listen, you're going to get what you're getting. And if I'm posting it, you're going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's size 10, 12 or 14, you're going to get it. And you've gone through sizes? Yeah. Do you ever feel no. less confident when you're on your bigger end of your scale? <clears throat> yeah, do you know what it is? I feel like that when like... I don't know, like being a size 14 sometimes and like when I don't dress up or I don't go anywhere, that's when I feel it. Mm. Or if I don't like make an effort or do a little reel or just like, you know, yeah. sing out or something, that's when I start feeling a frumpy. Mm. Yeah. And obviously you probably around that time of the month, you start feeling that, oh gosh, I'm going to jump out the window. But apart from that. <clears throat> and have you ever linked size to romance? Because I have. I've always, you know, I've been in relationships. I think, oh, you didn't love me because I was fat. Have you never? Mine's been the opposite. What? Like, <laughs> <laughs> when I was smaller, I used to think, oh, I didn't like, he's, he's, 
Because he likes rough things. You think yeah, 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 yeah. That was a thing for me at one point. Really? Mm-hmm. I couldn't even imagine that. Yeah, when I was Basically, smaller... Basically, I'm like, what? Yeah, when I was smaller, I remember being, like, in a predicament where, like... Come and like the, the, the girl and was making his head turn was fluffy girl. So I'm like, what do you want? If it, what am I going to gym for? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You just need to go to the fridge. Yeah. Or the cupboard or yeah. the pantry. Just, just relax myself. Yeah. No, it's true. She said the pantry. I'm just done. <laughs> yeah, whatever's in there. Yeah. Because it's funny that as women, we go through sometimes, as you just said, completely opposite things. Yeah. But we're all going through the struggle. Mm. And it's about finding your place. And do you find now that you're a woman in your 30s with mm. no children, is mm. that another pressure for you? Listen, every time I speak to my gran on the phone, Jeez. yeah. So what uh, So when you have one beer, when you have one beer, Gran, it just doesn't happen like that. Is it? So when you have one so when you have come what on, What do you say on. to gran in those conversations? Oh, soon, 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 soon. Uh, is it soon though? Soon, uh, because in order to have this baby, yeah, um, <laughs> don't do the do it. There needs to be someone to to have the baby with. Listen, so I'm, where you know, I'm, I'm good. You, are you satisfied? I'm good, because I could imagine <laughs> that your DMs pop, pop, not lock really, and drop. Really, not really. You don't get the average. Um, penile picture no that's yeah on twitter i do like oh do you on twitter, like, yeah <clears throat> you just drop it like it's hot like bam yeah like oh do you that's, want a piece of this another conversation yeah like literally dead but i feel like i don't get them you know the time i get most dms not when i post certain pictures is when i post food oh that's man when- love food in it Go and sit down. <laughs> there's no, there's no plate for you. Go on and go sit down. Like, oh, kind of, kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you look like sit on. <laughs> <laughs> what type of man do you like? Because <laughs> um, you know, like I think I'm a little bit of a silly black. Just saying, silly black. Yeah, you, are you a bit too young for it? No, I'm no, 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 no. We'll no, see no, a mere dish. Yeah. Um. No, I don't need. To, I don't need to match make though. Oh, you don't. No. Okay. I'm everything's good. Good, I yeah. do. So I'm. Doing a- <laughs> I like, um, I love banter. Okay. Like, and if it's like Caribbean banter, I'm gone. Okay. Like, I live for it. Um, I just like good teeth, good skin, good hygiene. Good, yeah, good smell, in it. Yeah, yeah, good hygiene. You know what I like? I like that smell, that crept and cone smell. What's that? Not not the bagels, them. You know what they, they sing about? Um, Sauvage, that, that one. Oh, Sauvage. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds lovely, yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A man don't understand it. Sometimes it just takes that to woo me. Listen, you know? I have memories from, I remember like the other day, I, somebody walked past me and they had on dupe. Oh, and that, no, <clears> no, 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 no. wait, hold on, hold I on. I can't, no. You when I was younger, on. yeah. When I was younger and I remember going to like a house party and that one guy that you dance with, he was dripped in jupe. Jup. And that little oh. memory that you had, yeah. <laughs> you had that's that what again. smells do, innit? It's like, oh, who's wearing jupe? Who's wearing jupe? Just, <laughs> are they still selling that thing out of your car? Because <laughs> that, that's a very familiar smell to me. Do you it know what is. I mean? It is. And I can't, I can't smell it now. They're memorable. Smells are yeah. just so like... Mm. What was one of your best childhood memories? Um, mm, that's a good question, actually. <sighs> What's one of my good best childhood memories? Um, <laughs> make him look like I some yeah, yeah childhood. No, it actually looks like you had no childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to take a moment and say sorry to your mum at um, this point. Like go, things like going to Alton Towers with the family and stuff like that, amusement park. Like, I remember that was like a fun thing we used to do often. Are you close to them? My family, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think that's really important? That's kept you like motivated and kept going. That you have them behind you. Yeah, I'm always always been encouraged to to never stop pursuing what I want. Mm. Even like in the times of <clears throat> COVID or whatever, and getting another job. My, my grandma always used to say to me like, "All right, all right, but don't 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 forget the mu- music. Don't forget oh, the music." Because cool. some like, people don't support the music. No, no, my 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 family's the complete opposite. Like they're just like cool. But do not forget, do you know what I mean? <clears throat> what what drives you, what's your passion and what your gifts are. Because, you know, when you're recording, you, as I said, you go on topics that are true to you. And one of the topics that I heard the other day mm. was a song that you wrote about a situation um, dealing with a pastor mm. in church. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about that. 
Um, yeah, I'd, I'd done a live stream show um, in December um, and I decided to debut a song that I'd never performed before called um, Gospel Truth. Um, and it was just a, basically about an experience that I had um, at a young age um, where I was sexually abused by a pastor. And that's mm. a man in a position of power mm -hmm. for a vulnerable woman. Mm. And what made you now in your 30s decide that this is the time? Um, I don't know. Do you know what? I wrote the song probably about three or four years ago. Okay. And <clears throat> I remember like being in the studio, um, this guy called Alex Montague, and he just played me like a few instrumentals and was playing. And it, it was just, it just, it just, the mood of the song just took me back to that situation. Mm. And I was, I was writing it. I was like, it's so nice to kind of talk about it and kind of be like, I thought to, brought myself back to that, that child in that room and, and experiencing those things. But at the same time, I had a lot of therapy and a lot of counseling after that and felt like I had a lot of healing from that. But it was nice to kind of talk about experience and, and, and relive that moment, but not be so emotionally attached to it. And just hearing over the years, so many, too many of my female friends have got stories about this that. And not necessarily pastors, but I mean like family friends and like, unfortunately like really close to home. And it's just like, because what made me think about was the uncles. Yeah. Because there was, you know, my dad had friends. Always there was a a man that was inappropriate. Yeah. Always. You know, always the uncle. And why, and I wondered, you know, did my mum and my parents protect me enough from these uncles? Or mm. did they not see what was going on? Yeah. And the roles and responsibilities. And so how were you able to get into a position where you were harmed by a person in a position of power. Was no one watching out for you? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's when you come from a family who, um, church is like the foundation, mm. there's a level of trust there. Like, mm. like some people in my family would trust the pastor over a policeman. Okay. And would trust, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, like yeah. that level of trust, understanding, and just literally like, dare I say, like, hierarchy sort of thing, like, mm. on a spiritual level, and, and just feeling like that would be unthinkable. Mm. Um, and then I think that's what just happens, and it's, like, not holding anybody ransom to that, like, not protecting me, but I guess everybody had, like, their views of this person and would never think or imagine that they would yeah. do something so so horrible as that. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's a recovery from that and yeah you have to stand in in your truth and there's a lot of truth that I personally have had to face up to that are difficult it's really sometimes difficult to see someone in another light like I had to look at previous relationships and realize that I was being domestically abused by them but at that time Oof. I was seeing it as it's just the way that they are yeah. that's just the way that that's they chat crazy. to me yeah and it's okay that they call Music. me names yeah. and they call it that they make me flinch and do you know what I mean? But when you're in it, yeah. it's a whole different ball game. And I love the fact that you are able to sing your truth. Mm. And that is, for someone like me, refreshing mm. and makes me want to do the same, you mm. know? Yeah. Because, you know, you are an influencer. Yeah. And so um, I uh, asked you, what is your uh, role uh, as an influencer, do you think? Um, I, I, don't, I would never call myself an influencer, you know? So you're a podcaster. You're a comedian. You're a singer. Um... <laughs> But there's still people who don't know who I am, so I'm not an influencer. <laughs> but you're influencing a lot of people. Yeah. So Do you know what? I think anything I would want to influence anyone is to just live your truth, man. Mm. Like and do your work on yeah. you. Because What does work on you look like though? It is facing your own feces. Oh, yeah. Oh. That is what that is. Stinky. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. And owning it. And not being swallowed up by it and that to the point where you're just like, you know, sending yourself into a spout of depres depression, but just owning it and just like owning your imperfections, man. Because I've had to do that. Is that about journaling? Is that being grounded? Is that yoga? Is that Pilates? What does owning your truth look like? Is it standing in the mirror? Is that doing affirmations? It's all of the above. Whatever sits with you, whatever sits or aligns with your spirit, innit? Like, and, and, and a lot of it's just about sitting with yourself. 
in moments and just literally just accepting, accepting that you're not perfect, accepting that there's been times when you've shagged, mm. and accepting that times when you need to be forgiven. So you need to forgive. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and I've been blessed to have like some women around me who are just realists as well. Yeah. And my friends, my family, like that are just, they always allow me to speak, hold us, they always hold a space for me as like one of my friends seems always says holding space. Yeah. Always hold a space for me without judgment. Um, and that's priceless. That's priceless for me, man. And I think, Having a sisterhood yeah. is vital. Yeah. But there are so many sisters fighting against each other. Yeah. How do you maintain your sisterhood? Uh, do you know what? I I think I've learned how to kind of, um, what's it called? Compartmentalise everyone. Okay. Because not everyone in their sisterhood Get can alarm. agree. Oh, Lord. <laughs> And I just have like, you have boxes of everyone. You know which one to go to for that. You know which one to go to for that. You know, do you know what I mean? And yeah. they probably feel the, the same about you. I think in my youth, I tried to do everything together. So I would say, oh, let's all go raving. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, it's no. not for, ev- and it's not for everyone. Yeah. Or the, 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 the 10 of us, we're just, I like you for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I'm the center, but it doesn't yeah. mean that you all should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. it together. Yeah. And so I think you, ha- you learn and my friendships, my friendships have reduced. I don't know about yours over the years. Mm. Have yours stayed the same? Have you, do you hold the same amount of friends or have you changed that? No, one, I like a few of my friends I've had, um, since I was at first year of secondary school. Mm. Um, and that, that's, a, that's like a small amount, but I've, most of my friends that are like close to me now, I've met over the past like 10, 15 years, okay. I think. Yeah, like around that time. But there's like a couple that I've known since like first day of secondary school type of thing. What defines a friend to you? Um, Just honesty. um, Real. I just, you see this facade yeah, babe, like I'm about, no. (laughs) I'm a realist. I like real, like, I like real individuals. Yeah. Um. And vulnerability. I just, I'm just about like just authenticity, man. So, how do you cope when you you play a tune for one of your bridges and she said that was shite, love? No, she would. My friend wouldn't say that though. They'd be like, it's not my favorite. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, it's not my favorite one of yours, but I like the other one. The other one. Let's go with that one. Shall we go with that one? Or like, if it's something that's a bit like when I was going through a stage of like doing a bit more jumpy, jumpy music. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, it's current, but it's not really my vibe. And um, so you were talking about going to America about visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Why are you going to be one of them UK girls that go to America? No, I was going to to, to America for work purposes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're not, you're not trying to run away from the UK scene and think you can break it in America. Yeah, but what, if even if I was, what? So what's the beef? I'm asking, isn't it? Look at look at I'm I'm asking. Asking. It was a dialogue. It was a think you can break America. Oh God! Oh, you ye of little faith. <laughs> My God, what a something! But it, 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 they say mm. that you know you can't break it in the UK, so you have to go America. Are you one of they? I'm not one of they. No. What I'm you, not one you of believe? So what you going to America? Don't I believe that everyone's for. journey is different, man. I just feel like there's no blueprint for that. Yeah. There's no, like, I know people that have, I live, have lived here and like released one, two, ting, songs, been signed in America. They still live here. They go back and forth. Like, I just feel like there's no one way how to do these things. If, if somebody goes on Instagram tomorrow and goes, yo man, Cherry V is the hardest, dopest female. <laughs> then it's like, oh like, yeah, you broke America. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. it's like, there's no, there's no one route to this thing. Like, I just, what I feel, I feel. And that's what you're going to do. So you don't think you're a sellout if you were to go <laughs> to America. Never. Why would you call somebody a sellout to going to another uh, another part of the world where they can flourish? Why would you call someone a sellout? It's not me, you know. No, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, you know, if that's what they feel like they need to do at that time. And I've seen those people do it and do be very successful. Like, especially producers that I know have gone 
over there and are flying now. Yeah. And what? So what? I must be angry, angry because I didn't go to America. No. <laughs> that was for them, isn't it? That was their journey. Yeah. And, and now this is out. your journey. Mm. What? Okay, let's think of a, a life without COVID. Mm. What does Cherry V's journey look like now? Where, where are we going from 2021 onward mm. with no pandemic? And that's the thing. That's what I was saying about America because I'm pretty sure that I would have, have spent a lot of time in the US in 2020 and 2021 because that was what the, the setup what mm. was and being able to go there back and forth, work there freely, mm. that was what was happening. So Has that opportunity what, left? Um, well, it's funny because obviously the outfit, the company that I was getting my visa through, I've decided to, um, part ways from them. Mm. So guess the going to America is not like, oh no, I'm never going there again. But in terms of like immediate effect, it's not really at the forefront of my mind right now because of the way the world is and what everything that's going on right now. And the music industry in, in the pandemic has changed. And, so much. you know, I was, I was thinking the other day about royalties and you've got streams and platforms now that you can play and can't play. Yeah. You guys are losing money. Babe. Losing. When I make no money <laughs> for lose, oh, you know what I mean? It's terrible. Like, and that's why when I done the live stream show the other day, I was just like, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to do no sell tickets thing. It's been a year. Like, if you feel led, just send me a donation on PayPal. It is the absolute money, most money I've ever made from a gig. No. Ever made from a gig. So you need to do another one. Well, you know, I'm just putting it up to ducks in a row. <laughs> but Why yeah, do you think that is, though? Why do you think people just then... I don't understand. Because you hold shows. Yeah, because... I think because people are gagging for live music. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think people can respect and appreciate someone who's just on their thing, you know, because yeah. literally I'm not, I don't, I've never waited for anyone. Mm. I've never waited for <clears throat> a label to co-sign me. I've never waited for an artist to co-sign me. I've always just been just going, 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 going. And I think once you are able to, to push through and survive in a pandemic, pandemic and still keep your, passion alight and still keep yourself going um people kind of respect that and just can just be like you know what just for pulling this show together getting your you know team together and the d- d- bats out the band and letting us choose the set list and all that stuff like this is a gift from me to you so it was more like from that angle of like i've seen you over the years of your team like this is my gift offering and the gifts were crazy um and i was just in awe i couldn't like the next day i could barely even look at my PayPal account. So I was like, what well, the backside is going on? <laughs> if you ever can't look at it, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Just send me a screenshot I and you. I will let you know what I need from that amount. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it must be so encouraging to hear and to feel the love from people. Oh, I was absolutely overwhelmed. Like, I was so overwhelmed, man. Is an album coming? Yeah. Tell me about this album. Um, the reason why I performed um, <clears throat> Gospel Truth at the um, live show is because that was going to be like one of the starting points and has been one of the starting points for the album. Um, just solid storytelling, solid R&B and just the, the true essence of me and parts of my journey, which I haven't spoken about, are going to be in that story. And I am... Eager to hear it. Yes, I'm eager to make it. So I know you don't like to spill too much of the romantic tea because that's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about it. And I think... But I'll let you know, though. I said I'm good. Yeah, but I want to know if you're great. I'm greater than great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love that. I love that. Do you know what? Would you ever get remarried? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Because I'm on that, like, oh, man, I know where I'm. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I want to, but then I don't want to because I'm scared. Because mm. I'm scared. I get it. I get it. I'm like, I want that feeling. I want that. I probably would just go Gretna Green and just do it, me and him, one away and not have this. Because don't you feel nice the shame too? too? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I just feel the shame that you've had this wedding. You've invited people. They've come. And then you say, oh, actually, um, the payment didn't go true. No, I didn't. I don't feel no shame. You don't. Because I tried. I love that, you know. I tried. That's it. I tried. Yeah. I tried. And I tried again. 
We tried. Mm. I tried. He tried. And that's it. And that's it. I'm it's the end her. of the road. And I can't let go. No, I can let go. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No voice to <laughs> no. no voice to men. But yeah. the thing is, I think it's like, it's important. Um, it was important for me to grasp and understand and know that it's not going to done me. Do you yes. understand me? Do like, it's mean? important for me to know that life can go on and it's not to say like life goes on it's not even that it's just like you can start again like some women have recovered from marriage some women recover not being married and having children and and going through job losses and losing their house like you can pick up do the work and keep it moving, keep it moving. love that mm. so if there is a woman out here that is feeling unloved that is feeling that they they're not worthy that mm. they look at you and just want to be like you. What words will you tell them to feel encouraged? I would just say, like, just do not underestimate your power, man. Like, do not underestimate. And it sometimes it's about, like, taking yourself back to a place where you had to get through the mud. You had to get through the, the trenches and reminding yourself that, like, you've got it. You've got this. And there's so many examples... I say this to my friends all the time, like there's so many examples in the world of women who have pushed through situations that we have maybe gone through on even worse. Let them be your example. Like the power is in you. Like, don't forget. I love that. Mm. See? This is why you're here. This is why she's my underdog, you love. <laughs> when I bring out my album, I'll come with you to America and just done the whole dance. <laughs> yeah, man. <So. laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the Underdog Bites Back. We love her. Make sure you follow, listen, buy, send a PayPal, make it happen. (laughs) Thank you.